What up everybody? Welcome to the Death Twitch. I'll be your damn horror host, Eric Harrison, and today have I got some good 80s treats for you. That's right, one of the best remakes ever. One of the best creature features ever, The Fly from 1986. <laughs> No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Dr. Seth Brundle's brilliant invention goes horribly wrong, and two beings merge into one. Rated R starts Friday, August 15th at theaters everywhere. All right, so The Fly came out in 1986, directed by David Cronenberg and produced by Mel Brooks, of all people, starring Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, John Getz, and is based on a short story by George Langeland that was published in the 1957 Playboy, and then the original movie came out the very next year in 1958. So basically, this remake mostly follows the structure of the original, which is, is just about a scientist inventing these telepods, and then teleporting himself without realizing there's a fly in there, then that starts to cause a transformation. I know, I know it's working! So I like how the movie just jumps right into the middle of a conversation between our two stars, uh, Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. Now, I know I don't need to tell you this, but eh, you never know, there might be some newbies out there that don't know that at this time, Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis were dating, so it's really cool to see like their on-screen chemistry is real, and it's very, it's very apparent that it's real, that they're really into each other. So that really adds kind of some depth to the movie. But as I said, it just kind of jumps right into the middle of a conversation. I like how it jumps right into the relationship between these two people, and I like how it just jumps right into him talking about his his invention, right? So he's there. To do what? To pick up a girl? I'm not sure. She's looking for a story. And he's like, I got a story for you. Come back to my loft. She, she's iffy, but she does. A brave woman. Anyway, so he, he brings her back to his big-ass, massive 80s loft. Because everyone in the 80s had one of these suckers. I don't know where you get these or how you pay for them. I wish I had one. And then he shows her his telepods, right? And it blows her mind. <laughs> and so... Her, you know, original instinct is like, uh, I'm a reporter, I'm gonna go report this, and Seth Brundle's like, no you're not, uh, I need to keep this under wraps till I'm, you know, I've worked out all the bugs, no pun intended. So then she decides to go to her ex-boyfriend, I don't know why, she keeps going to this guy for advice, he's just, he's a sleaze, spoiler alert, he kind of winds up becoming a little bit of the hero, but the, about the whole movie, you just hate this asshole, and I, you don't understand why she keeps going to him, but anyway, he's like, you're being fooled, this is a big trick, there's no such thing as teleporters. So Seth is fine with that, he's like, good, I don't want people to believe, but hey, before you go out there and start telling more people about this, why don't you work with me, we'll work together, you could have a real story on your hands, a, a, a book, are a series of books, everything, and, and I could get my work done and have it documented. So they decided to start working together. Um, so throughout this part of the movie, you know, we get to see the blossoming romance, and also we get to know Seth Brundle before the change. So that's very important to understand that he's very much, like, he's very much a nerdy scientist, kind of OCD, he's eccentric, and he's a loner. All these things, he's very kind of meek, you know, he's he's not athletic or he's not strong, he's not, it's not really his forte, and he wears the same clothes every day, <laughs> things like that. We really get to know him and, and it's good because it's good to see the contrast between who he was and who he became. So, he's having problems with the teleporter, right? It teleports just material things but nothing living. It can't teleport living things and that's like his goal, I guess. That's the final block to getting this fully functional teleporter going. And he can't figure out what the problem is. I think it's because he's a virgin. <laughs> but luckily for him, we've got our, a Gina Davis on hand. So he says, Can't deal with the flesh. It only seems to work with inanimate objects. Nothing that's living. The problem is the flesh. The, the machine doesn't understand the flesh, whatever that means. So this is a David Cronenberg movie. Naturally, we're going to get a lot of monologues and strange philosophical ideas about f 
human flesh and tissue, and, you know, weird Cronenberg type stuff. So she decides to fuck his brains out. <laughs> She's like, you're so, whatever, He's, you're so nerdy and cute, I just have to fuck you. And so they do, and then he winds up getting a microchip stuck in his back, right? So she pulls that shit out, now he's got a wound. He's got a wound um, from microchip. Now, I think that this is definitely another Cronenberg mixture of technology mixed in with flesh. So I think it's the wound on his back, which is why when he goes through the teleporter, the fly chromosomes and DNA gets mixed with his because he had like an open wound. I think if he didn't have the open wound, there wouldn't have been a fusion. I could be completely wrong here, but otherwise why else have that situation with a wound made by m a microchip of all things. Anyway, Ronnie takes off again because her ex is threatening to go ahead and publish uh, the story, which I guess now he believes is real. And in the meantime, poor Seth thinks that Ronnie went back to the ex for because she loves him, or she's fucking him, or whatever reason. So he's drinking, he's a little bit depressed. And he's got some uh, baboons, right? <laughs> of course he does, who doesn't? Anyway, he's got these baboons that he uses to test, right? So they put one through to try and teleport, and when it goes to the other side, the baboon is inside out and disgusting. <laughs> But the second time after he reprograms his computer, after he's had sex and now he understands the flesh, uh, he reprograms the computer and he puts one of the baboons through and boom! Works great! It's brilliant, right? Still though, where is he keeping this baboon? It's, you never see it except for, he's just hanging out with it. I don't know. Is it, does he have a cage? Where do you get a baboon to experiment on anyway? Um, off track. <laughs> so, thinking, oh no, she's off with the ex, she's probably having sex with him right now, he's drinking, he's, he's happy that the teleportation worked, but because he's drunk and jealous, he has bad judgment and he makes a, a bad decision to go through the teleporter himself, which, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why he would do that, he's a smart man otherwise, but he did it. How you doing? Now you tell me. Am I different somehow? Is it live or is it Memorex? It's too bad Ronnie missed it. And you know, at first, everything seems kosher. Not only that, he feels better. He feels like he's been purified by the transportation process. So Ronnie comes back, he lets her know that he um, went through and she can't believe it. And then uh, shortly thereafter, I think they do have some sex again, of course they do. And she discovers there's these weird hairs growing out of the uh, wound from the microchip on his back. And he's acting a little strange. Suddenly he's more confident. Suddenly he's like, he's a little buffer, you know, he's athletic. We get this great scene where he just starts performing gymnastic routine in his, in his loft. <laughs> and um, I really like this scene, even though it's kind of strange that he would be doing like a pommel horse thing or doing flipping around the bars, whatever they call that. It's a little strange, but it's cool. And I really like that there's no music to undercut the scene. I can just see it in other movies or other directors having some big over the top dramatic music when he's swinging around in the bar. That would just ruin it. I'm so glad that they left it ambient and quiet. It just puts you in there. Like you are actually witnessing this person who was otherwise you know, just kind of meek, now he's able to be like a superman, he's doing all these crazy things, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, so after he goes through and he starts to change and he thinks he's feeling better, he's kind of hyperactive, his mind's going like uh, at light speed, his body is getting stronger, he's just going through these ch changes so rapidly and he's all hyperactive and, and hopped up on sugar now that he's part fly, he's eating sugar and sweets all the time, candy bars. But anyway, he decides, look, uh, you need to go through the transporter too so that you can be like me and feel as good as I do and have this great change. But of course, na you know, she's afraid naturally. And she sees that there's something not right about him. So she has every right to be afraid. 
I, the moment that she won't go along with it, he just flips out. Because he's like uh, one of those alpha male assholes with too much testosterone and steroids or whatever going on. He's kind of got that rage. So he's like, F you, I'm out of here. And he goes to a bar, breaks some guy's arm, steals a girl, brings her back, fucks her, and then tries to stick her in the... Uh, Teleporter, <laughs> stick her in there like like it's a microwave. He tries to put her in the, through the the teleporter and a no go. She won't have it. Then Ronnie comes back and says, you know, don't. You shouldn't do it. This is fucked up. There's something not right with that guy. So what I really like about this movie is it's very it's a very tragic kind of horror movie. It's not really a monster movie. It's not. It is a creature feature, but it's not like the villainous creature. It's not like he turned into this thing and then he's just running around killing his big body count. It's not like that. This is very much reminiscent of like old school, maybe some uh, universal horror, tragic horror uh, elements in this movie. I really like. I like that there's this long, hour-long build-up of getting to know the characters, getting to know the situation, just just getting a feel for everything before we get into the real horrific, the actual horror of the fly. And that starts to come in about an hour into the movie when. Things start not going so well for Mr. Seth there. He's starting to look kind of fucked up. The body parts are falling off. Yeah, there's clear something didn't go right. And this is where the movie really, really starts to shine. Because if you're into some 80s effects, you love yourself some makeup effects, some 80s special effects, this is a, just, just a masterpiece of a movie as far as that goes. And it's, it's David Cronenberg... Uh, just the right amount of Cronenbergness, you know. It's not overdone. It's not. I mean, it does get pretty fucked up, but you know, he works up to it rather than just right off the bat hitting you with a bunch of fly imagery. But anyway, once it does start working up to it, it's really great to watch all of the stages of poor Seth's deterioration as the fly DNA is fusing with his human DNA. So, we, like I said, we get stages first, he just looks a little bad, then he looks a little worse, then he's starting to become kind of disfigured and mutated, then his teeth are falling out, his ears falling off. It gets crazy, it's gross to watch, especially when he's sitting there staring in the mirror, pulling off his fingernails and stuff. Like, that's the, that gets under my skin. It's like, ew, that is that is creepy as fuck, watching somebody pull their fingernails off. So I like that, how it gets you on edge like that, like seeing this, these things you don't really want to see, but you can't look away. Anyway, so Veronica, she shows up again, right, to tell him that, uh-oh, she's pregnant, and she doesn't know if there's going to be a, a monster in her body or what's going on. So she's freaking out. She shows up to tell Seth about this, finds that he's crawling on the walls, which is a classic 80s effect. We saw this with Nightmare on Elm Street, Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo, all sorts of movies. They liked to do the, the uh, rotating room effect, and I, you know what? I like to watch it. It's, all, it's always cool to just watch somebody crawl along the, the ceiling or the walls. But... It's at this point where I start to think, why doesn't the movie take like a hard left and he just becomes a superhero? Why didn't he become the fly? The superhero, like there's the tick or whatever. He could be the fly. He could crawl up fucking walls and go and save people with his super strength, even though he looks like a hideous, gross creature. Um, here's uh, one complaint, though, I do have about this movie is it's called The Fly. Guy turns into a fly. But he has no wings. At no point in the movie does he ever have wings. At no point does he ever fly. <laughs> the fly never fucking flies. What the fuck? Dude never got wings. I always found that weird, even as a kid. Now that I think back about it, I was always like, dude, these effects are awesome. That creature looks great. Where's his fucking wings at? Oh, well. I, well you know, what are you going to do? But anyway, Veronica, knowing she's got this weird monster or possible monster inside of her, decides to go get an abortion. She can't take it because uh, she has a nightmare about delivering up to a giant maggot. So, oh, I'm surprised that this scene is even in this movie. I'm surprised that they allowed, like, the MPAA allowed for a scene where a woman gives birth to a giant maggot, but it's in there and it's disturbing. And that's what's great about The Fly, because it's a great story. And then when it gets crazy, it gets fucking crazy. So she's in the doctor's office about to like get an abortion when Seth just bursts through the window, takes her off 
onto a, some rooftop somewhere and begs her not to kill the kid. It's a real touching scene. It's They really can make you sympathetic for poor Seth. That's what I mean about this being a tragic horror. You know, this isn't just a straight creature feature horror. He's a villain. He's not a villain. He doesn't want to be this way. He never intended for this, but he is. He thinks this child might be his last like bit of humanity, and he wants her to keep it, and she says she can't do it, so it's a real sad moment for for old Seth there because he realizes that was his, you know, that was his offspring that it could have been, maybe even looked like him and been like his human self, but it's, you know, she doesn't, she can't do it, and I don't blame her. Anyway, so at this point, the ex that we have thoroughly hated throughout the entire rest of the movie actually starts to pull his weight, shows up to the loft, puts together some kind of a shotgun there, and then immediately gets his fucking hand dissolved off with some fly vomit. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks for him. It sucks for him, man, because, oh, the fact that they decided to go that route, it could have been anything. It could have been the fly knocked the gun out of his hand, whatever. They had a little struggle. It could have been anything, but no, it's Cronenberg. He's like, no, he's going to fucking throw up on his that guy's hand and it's going to just dissolve it. So he falls on the ground. He's trying to get the gun again with his leg, and Mr. Fly is like, nope. <laughs> Stole my girl. Your mother got her pregnant, caused her death. Dissolved my hand and my foot with fly vomit. I had no love for the man. He bugged me. So I want to say that I think that this is one of the rare movies where I think that it deserves an actual vomit meter. gonna spew spew into this Seth's idea is that oh well, Seth but Seth the fly Brundle fly he's like the only solution now that I can think of is if I take Veronica pregnant Veronica and myself through the teleporters and we all just get fused into one giant miserable sick looking creature of fly Jeff uh, Veronica and the baby. Oh man, I'm glad that that didn't actually go through. But he sticks her in one of the telepo uh, telepods, and he's gonna go ahead and uh, go through the plan. But good old X, even though he's got he's less of a one <laughs> one hand and one foot less than he had about ten minutes ago, he still manages to get the shotgun and blow away some of the cords. So it doesn't teleport Veronica. It's it teleports the fly and combines it and fuses it with the teleporter itself which is very odd. And then you get your, your final little uh, transformation of the creature comes out, part telepod, part fly creature, and it's pretty strange, right? Now, this movie ends very much like the original where the uh, wife, spoiler alert, kills her, <laughs> her fly husband to, to, to spare him the suffering and the pain and whatever, the horror of it. So in the original, they use a, some kind of a press. He's, he puts his body under there, and she pushes the button, and they squish him. And this one, it's good old head explosion. It's David Cronenberg. We get ourselves just a good old-fashioned head explosion. She uses the shotgun, just blows that fucking fly head away, and then we get happy ending for everybody, except for Seth, poor guy. All right, let's go ahead and rate this. So, it's The Fly. I really, really, I really like this movie. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four and a half, so it's almost got the full five. Four and a half. 
Great, great remake, great creature feature, great effects, makes you sick, but makes you happy. Check it out.